This video is brought to you by Skillshare. More about them later in the video. The design of bridges can seem really complex as the size and scale of them means that surely they're harder to design. However, the in-service conditions isn't that hard. They have basic principles and they're really easy to break down. And I'll go through some of them in this video. However, there's unique design aspects to every bridge design that you may not think about and that's not associated with any other building type. And also break down where you need to be more careful and some of the ways you can simplify your design meaning that your building can be safer and more efficient. My name is Brendan, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. First, start off with the more complex aspect of bridge design, where you need to spend most of your time making sure that it can get to where it's going. And then we'll move later into the more simplification about how you can quickly scheme a bridge design, meaning that you can size things up. When you're starting off a bridge, you can see it spanning across many distances, achieving big spans. Surely it's more complex. Well, the complexity comes in how you get from that final design from where you're currently starting. So all the complexity is happening in the construction of that bridge. And if we're just looking at a video here, we can see how much effort is going into to building that bridge across an area. And quite often you need to make sure that the area is still accessible underneath as you can block off vast amounts of area underneath if you were just to put formwork up. And before you get to that next where you can be more stable, there can be really big cantilevers. So when you're designing your bridge, you need to not only see about how it is in its final state, but how are you going to get it from where it's currently at to jump across that vast distance in a safe and an effective manner while still having people potentially operate underneath it. So all the complexity is going through the staging about how you put certain aspects down, about how you jump the bridge further. Most buildings, they're quite small as you can just have props and beams that allow you to get there quite easily just through putting in additional props. The bridges, as they have vast spans, don't have that same benefit. So you spend a lot of time in designing and detailing the construction stages of a bridge as it goes through. So that's where the whole complexity lies. Well, the design of a bridge isn't that complex. As it has big loads, you typically want to try and isolate the building into simpler, simple span structures. So either simple span beams, so making sure you're not relying on continuity necessarily, or transforming the loads back into the direct actions that they're applied to. So more like trusses or cable state bridges. And this is all about trigonometry at this point. You see, you're more efficient in tension than you are in compression. See, a compression member can potentially buckle out a plane, where a tension member is just how much tension force it can apply. See, they can just be designed based on the tension that's applied to them. Sometimes you do need to think a little bit about how much elongation you're going to get and how that can potentially affect the bridge. So it's just about PL and EA, just the extension, making sure that you're tightening it up such that when it does get loaded up, it doesn't have negative effects on your structure. So we're looking at a project like the Queen's Wharf Neville Bonner Bridge. The scheming of such a structure can seem quite simple. You see, you've just got the tension going up, you've got compression members, but you're transferring the tension as much as you can, not in bending, in tension as it's more efficient in that way. Now, we're kind of oversimplifying the problem here. There is other aspects like vibration, quite easy to make a bridge that's safe, that is bouncy. But if you don't have proper consideration of that bounce, it can have negative effects. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare has an amazing online learning community for people that just love to learn. Now us as engineers, we're lifelong learners and they offer amazing content that is premium and ad free and updated on a regular basis. Also there's a large variety of content that you can learn from. So whether you're trying to focus on your leadership skills, creative writing skills, photography, how to write music, graphic design, or even those marketing skills that is important for all engineers, but typically we're quite bad at. They even have some courses on ETABs. So if you're trying to focus on more of those hard skills, you can learn it through Skillshare. Recently, I've been taking a filmmaking course to help improve my YouTube videos. And this is a course produced by Dan Mace. Filming for all, tell your story through video. In the course, he breaks down how to know your audience and the seven types of stories that you need to know to make sure you're making engaging content. It goes from translating your story to video and then how to arrange it such that the edit is engaging and gripping. So this will make sure that I'm making more engaging content for you so that you can not only learn, but also have fun while doing so. I'm gonna tell you what every great story involves. Firstly, is a simple three act structure known as an arc. Skillshare has an amazing offer for my audience that doesn't come around often. The first 500 people to click the link in the below description will get a one month free trial on Skillshare. So you can try it out risk free. Now let's get back to the content. And one of the most famous bridges that's had negative effects through vibration is the Tacoma Narrow Bridge, where they made it so efficient and safe 
but when it got affected by wind, it hit a harmonic frequency that means that it moved a lot and ended up in a catastrophic failure. Why you can make sure your bridge is safe, the more complexity of that safety is about how do you make sure your bridge is also not affected by those negative effects of wind or vibration or human vibration across the bridge. And this can actually spend a lot more time through either dampness or stiffening up the structure, meaning that it can not transmit the vibrations through the system. But when we look at most other bridges that are not cable stays, you can see that simple trusses is the easiest way to think about a building. You don't have it locked in at one end, so you've got a roller on one end and pinned on the other, but it's just a simple framed up building. So where do you need the structure? You look at your bending moment diagrams and your shear forces. See the bending moment diagrams on a simply supported structure is typically deeper in the middle, meaning that you need to have the most tension capacity in the middle of that structure. So that's why I typically see bridges having arch shapes as they need to have their biggest capacity in the middle and they don't need to have as much capacity on the outside as they're following that arch structure. Now an arch bridge is typically just the inverse of the bending moment diagram. But likewise, if you were to do it with tension the other way, you could also flip it upside down and have a reversed arch bridge where you've got the tension cable at the bottom and have the compression deck at the top. Now trying to transfer things as much as you can into tension forces is the most efficient way to design your building. And a really amazing example of this is the Millennium Bridge in London. We can see it's cable stayed to some extent. You see you've got the cables draping up and down. And if you look at those cables, they're basically matching the bending moment diagram. So they've got hogging moments and sagging regions. You can see that's basically reflective of a continuous bending moment diagram. So this way they can achieve the most efficiency where they need it, meaning they've got the peak capacities that are matching the bending moment diagrams. So by knowing just some simple trigonometry, it can allow you to do that first scheming of the building, meaning that your structure can be structurally safe. This is not really that much complexity there. And if you want to learn about another simple concept in structural engineering, I've got a link to a video here about a simplification that you probably didn't know about, but will make your designs better and stronger. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, there's two ways that you can do this. You can either become a YouTube or Patreon member. Without their support, this type of content would not be possible. And as always, keep learning, and I hope to see you next week. Bye.